Hi everyone, welcome to Adventures with Raven and Rowley. I'm Raven and this is Rowley. Last week I talked about car and tent camping and reviewed the Ozark Trails seven person TP tent as well as one of those back seat blow up mattresses for the car. This week I'll show you my 6x12 cargo trailer inside and out and reveal my pre-construction plans and sketches for this trailer. If you're curious, please join me on this journey and continue to watch. Comments and suggestions, especially suggestions, would be appreciated too. So, the backstory. I bought this trailer two years ago. I bought it used. My intention was to convert it and actually live out of it and travel around the country and that kind of stuff. I was in a very dire situation and needed to get it done really fast. Uh, well, I needed to get it done. At any rate, I bought it. Then I found out that I couldn't do anything with it here. I couldn't stay here at this park and live in that trailer. It need the trailers here. Our RVs need to be certified by various and sundry RV associations, that kind of thing. I bought it um, because I had to get out in a hurry. And I had been watching um, Bob Wells on Cheap RV Living and said I could do that. So, these are the pictures of when I bought it. A very nice and clean and smart looking trailer, right? Six by 12 cargo trail, enclosed cargo trailer with barn doors. And this is what it looks like now. Okay. This is my, um, this is my cargo trailer. The car that's in front is renting half of my allotted space. They're for a couple from Hungary and they should be back by the end of September to get their car. Right now, I'm gonna go in there and show you my trailer. So this is my cargo trailer up close. Let me take you a tour around the outside. This has, I bought this used, but it has a lock on it. I'm going to have to get a locksmith to take that off because I don't have a key. Whoever had this put in electric units on the outside so you could plug in. Where is the cord? Oops. And you can plug into, what is that? 20 amp, 30 amp, oh, 30 amp. Where is my thing? You can plug into 30 amps with this. Or you can plug into here. Unfortunately, like the, uh, the lock on the, on the tongue, I don't have the, the key to this door. So I have to replace that lock. This is, I think, overall in pretty good condition. Door. That's the kind of lock. I'm going to take that off. And around the other side, just a regular, ordinary, everyday 6x12 cargo trailer. So it needs some work. As you can tell, I've been using this for storage.
I've got all kinds of stuff in here, all kinds of tools, stuff I've been collecting over the last two years, probably more than that. And for right now, I have to throw more stuff in here. This is from my walker from when I used to use one. Isn't that something? I don't use it now. So this platform, and I forgot to bring over the measuring tape, um, looks to be about two feet deep. I intended to bring that over so I could measure this, and that means I have to come back over here again. Well, of course I do anyway, because i got to take all of this stuff out of here. Here's a refrigerator. This is a refrigerator. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Now, the thing is, there's even a commode, which I'm going to use because it's a perfect seat for, um, for a bucket. Uh, I'm going to put more stuff in here right now because I have to get it out of the out of the car. All that camping stuff here. I suppose it goes to the vent outside. I have to, well, I obviously have to take off all of this wood to find out. Okay, inside the front door is a light switch. It works off of that plug right next to the tire that I'm going to put out on the front. There's another light switch over here near the door. And there's a socket up there. Those are the only inputs for electricity in here. Now, I'm going to have to take these walls off. And first of all, to insulate. But second of all, to find out, I think it goes through here where these wires go to come from this one is up here at the top but there's nothing that goes down to the to the switch oh there is this wire here here it is here it is there you go that goes down to the switch it's only one wire what about this one there's another set of wires over here this is so old that it's crumbling it's obviously going to have to be replaced. This wire is going around here. It's probably to the lamps on the outside, you know. The brake lights and that kind of stuff. This is up here at the top. This is all, um, let me turn around this side. This is all square brackets. I don't know what kind of studs or whatever you call these things, ribs, there are further down. I don't know if they're square like these are or not, or if they're channel brackets or what. This that's in the trunk has to go in the cargo trailer. And when it gets warm, I'll come in and refix this and paint pictures on the side of it. Two years later, obviously, I need to do some work on this needs to be cleaned out first of all so I can see what I've got you know I've been collecting stuff so much I don't even know what I have you know <laughs> I kind of got an idea but not really what I plan to do next about it is to get a large SUV or a truck truck like an F-150 to pull this cargo trailer right at this time I have no vehicle but that's going to change I prefer a large SUV. My goal right now is to save like crazy. Um, I found that I've been finding am amazing stuff to spend money on. For instance, when I went and I 
film this uh, clip to show you what the inside of my trailer looks like right now, I discovered that I had two lawn and leaf bags of yarn that's in the cargo trailer. Two types. I have the cotton yarn for doilies and fine things like that. And then I have the acrylic for hats and scarves and sweaters and that kind. Okay. Lawn and leaf bags. Different colors. All different sizes. Um, I have a plastic bin. Uh, I think a 65 gallon bin in front of my RV in the skirt that fits around the front of my fifth wheel and it has skeins of yarn and stuffing for the doll. Then I looked in the house and I realized inside here right now right behind my computer is a shopping bag full <laughs> with at least skein, six skeins of yarn. I got four or five half-finished projects laying on the desk also next to those skeins of yarn. So these are things that I really don't need to spend money on and that I have been spending money wastefully. So obviously if I'm going to get this SUV, I need to start saving and stop buying. But it's hard to stop buying stuff. It is hard to stop spending money. It's just amazing. Um, it to me it was almost as bad as, as trying to stop cigarette smoking <laughs> I find myself getting ready to click on a buy button almost every day it's crazy uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing it my goal is to have that SUV by the end of December uh, and get out on the road by the end of January my goal also has to be to live more frugally than I have been. I mean, after all, I've got food in the house. I've got at least four months worth of dog food in the house. There's no reason for me to go to the store. I've got canned fruit. I've got frozen fruit. I've got, you know, come on. I don't need to spend money. Just learn to live a little bit less than, not, not even less. I can't see that I would be depriving myself of anything. I'm thinking that I would buy an older used SUV uh, in great working condition or as close as I can get it anyway to great working condition. I think I prefer a large SUV over a uh, Ford 150 let's say just because of the getting in in and out of the thing. Um, I'm 70 years old this 70, 78 years old this month. I have to consider things like climbing in and out of trucks, <laughs> you know, I don't know. When I plan to get on the road for long distance trips in a short amount of time, I figured that uh, come January, I would take the trailer, clean it out, obviously, take the trailer and use what I have for my tenting supplies and what plastic furniture like this thing over here, this thing, uh, plastic dresser. I can use those inside until I've been traveling for a while, maybe a month, to see exactly what I want in that trailer before I start customizing it. Now I know I should be insulating and all of that kind of stuff, but I'm on a budget. Things have to be done little bit by little bit, you know. So it'll get done, though. I'm not sure, but I'd like to attend the uh, WRTR in Quartzsite, Arizona this coming February. But I'm not sure because, believe it or not, there's an extremely high crime rate in Quartzsite, Arizona during that time. Uh, the crime rate is up to like 96 percent. That means that 96 percent of the cities in the United States have less crime than Quartzsite, Arizona. It's probably due to the 100,000 RVs that show up there. That you know, it's like a little city and that's where opportunists congregate. It's just, and it's also way too many people. 
I've never been crazy about large crowds. Now, mind you, I was born in New York City. You'd think I'd be used to that kind of stuff, but it's not really the case. I had moved out of New York oh, when I was like 45, so half my life ago. And there was once when I went back, probably 20 years ago, when I went back to New York City to see my mother. <clears throat> and I got out of the train at Penn Station and had to cross the street. And I stood on that corner and watched three changes of the lights before I could actually walk, step out onto the, into the crosswalk and cross that street. Every time the light changed, there was this wall of people coming towards me, and I got petrified. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, until I finally talked myself and, look, you have to cross the street. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be here forever, you know? I figure after I take uh, a long trip and I can start working on the trailer itself, because by then I'll know exactly what I want where, or hopefully anyway, I'll take the trailer out on uh, weekends. Well, not really, on weekends. I mean, what I consider weekends would be uh, Tuesday to Thursday. That's when most people are not out and trying to get a little bit of country air, you know. And as I convert it to see how things work. I can't do construction here in this park, but right outside the gate is BLM land. You know, so I could just pull out 100 feet and do what I'm going to do and come back in. But, of course, I have to have an SUV first. I plan to ride around with the plastic furniture, as I said, so that I really, so that I'll know exactly what I want to do inside. It's kind of funny in a strange way, but I've been collecting odds and ends of plastic furniture. Now, I really don't like plastic furniture. But I needed to function really fast and, you know, I didn't want to go to Goodwill and get something wood that, I don't know, I just I figured I'd wait until I made up my mind about getting whatever wood I was going to put in here. Because I'm thinking, too, that eventually, there's a fly in here, <laughs> uh, eventually I was going to gut the inside of this thing and make it the way I want it. So anyway, so I really don't like plastic furniture, but I've got a lot of it. And it will work perfectly in the cargo trailer for the very same reason until I decide what it is that I really want in there and how I want it. So I'm actually pretty much set up to go camping today in that trailer, if I had something to pull it. After the construction is final, I want to keep the, the RV on the lot for a month or two and go out on short trips um, before I make the decision to put this fifth wheel in storage. Uh, I figured that I would put it in storage for, I don't know, three, four months at a time. Definitely come back here for the winter because the winters here in southern Nevada are gorgeous and warm. <laughs> uh, so here are my kind of sort of modified construction plans of what I of what I want the inside to look like. Right now, I've got everything I need except I need to put new locks and security stuff on this on this cargo trailer. Safety stuff like propane monitors, fire extinguishers, fire monitors, that kind of stuff. And of course, the SUV. My ultimate goal with this is to spend one year saving and traveling to see the Redwood Forest, Blue Ridge Mountains, waves of grain, etc. that everyone is going to be singing about in a couple of days. I'm going to use up all the yarn while I'm out there and starting, well actually I've already started. I wanted to use up all this yarn and make hats for the homeless, baby sacks, hats for newborns in hospitals, etc. See, the thing is, is I started making hats for the homeless here, but the people who were distributing them and that kind of stuff just stopped. And so I figured, while I'm out on the road and I'm traveling, if I pass through a small town, I could stop at a hospital or a senior center or wherever and ask them if they could use any hats. 
or at the hospitals, could they use any newborn baby stuff? Because if they can, here they are. And I would just keep making hats because I like to make them, <laughs> you know, and serves two purposes. Cleans out my cargo trailer, keeps my hands busy, provides comfort for somebody. I also intend to go see relatives and friends. And I have relatives all over this country, <laughs> you know, so... I need to go see people because I haven't seen people in years. You know, I've only met one of one of my two and a half great grandchildren. And she was six months old at the time I met her. And she is now 10. So it's time, you know. Just this last trip I met, made caused me to realize that this place, America, is huge, really, really large. I passed, I didn't pass, I stopped at a gas station that was said, had a sign out there, said last gas for 100 miles. The gas pumps were from the 1960s, were in deplorable <laughs> condition, but they had gas. <laughs> that was all I needed to know. Gas was $4.67 a gallon, and probably because it was the last gas for 100 miles. And it was the last gas for 100 miles. So on that drive, coming into these wonderful vistas of this beautiful country, I realized that I want it all. I want it all. I want to see it all. I want to do it all. Um, and, you know, years ago, probably I think in the 80s, might have been before that, somebody made a song about I want it all. And... And I kept saying from then on, you know, yeah, I want to do that. I want to get out. But I never did. You know, I was always, it's always the something, you know. So I didn't go. But I'm going to go. I'm counting on the longevity of my family just to do just that. I, I expect that my last gasp should be around 135 years. Now, okay, you know, I understand. But you don't know where science is going to be in the next five years. So maybe I'll reach it then. Maybe I'll be ready to kick the bucket then. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's it. So, so thanks for watching and subscribing. And thanks to those who bought us a treat. If you'd like to help us get on the road, please see the links below and use them. Please share my video please, and subscribe to Adventures with Raven and Rowley. This is really new channel. Uh, it's only been up since April 16th, and I could use your help to reach 1,000 subscribers. Also, like and ring the notification bell, if you would. The YouTube algorithm only responds to subscriptions, bell ringing, and the like, so your help is appreciated to get its attention, okay? See you next Friday. Take care of you and yours, and blessed be.